Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made me and Tim going to rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning, good morning, good morning, my brothers and my sisters. We thank God for this day. We thank God for another opportunity to come to give him praise. Amen. Aren't you excited about God today? Aren't you glad that God woke you up this morning, closing your right mind with the activities of your limbs? Amen. Amen. I got well, oh, and my road dog with me today from Tennessee. Sister Regina, God bless you on this morning, my sister. Amen. God bless you, woman. God bless you. Good morning. Yes, we are excited about what God is going to do. We're going to come with a quick song. We got a big show today. So we're going to come with a quick song, a song that my mother would say, I'm a Jew, um, scripture, and then what we're going to do, again, let me just say who I am. My name is Pastor Clara Mitchell, pastor of True Visions Community Church, the best church on the east side of Detroit. Amen. Amen. And I have my dear sister, Evangelist Regina, amen, all the way from Tennessee. See, a song that my mother would say, and then we're going to come with a quick scripture. And uh, evangelist, uh, Regina, I need you to go down to your bottom of your foot today to pray. Amen. Because I don't be praying for a wonderful show, but we praying for our very own R.J. Watkins on today. Amen. We I'll need God that, to heal him on today. Amen. Amen. It's a quick song my mother used to say. Let me say. Down through the years. God's been good to me, oh, down through the years. God been good to me, oh, down through the years. Yes, sir, God's been good to me. You know God really been good. Food on my table, God's been good to me. Oh, food on my table. Come on, y'all sing with me. God's been good to oh. me. He gave me food on my table. Yes, sir. God's been good to me. You know God's really been good. My grandma would say, good, good, good. Come on, y'all. God's been good to me. Oh, good, good, good. God's been good to you. Oh, good, good, good. Yes, sir. God's been good, good to you. You know God's really been good to me and you and you. Amen. Check out that, that ending, y'all. Come on now. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Scripture reading, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24 through 27. It said, do you not know that, that those who run in a race all run? But only one receives the prize. Run in such a way that you may win. Everyone who competes in the games exercise self-control in all things. They then do it receive they do it to receive a perishable wealth, but we imperishable. Therefore I run in such a way as not without aim. A box is such a way as not beating the air but i discipline my body and make it my slave so that after i have preached to others i may myself will not be disqualified the word of god for the people of god and minister um regina is going to come with our prayer glory be to god thank you jesus we give you all the glory and all the honor on this morning lord god for this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, yes. Lord God, we set our petitions before you, oh God, this morning <laughs> with the humility of our hearts, the bendedness of our knees, oh God, crying out to you in the holy hill of Zion, oh God. Yes. We just want to say thank you for the breath in our body, Lord God, as you blew into Adam's nostrils uh, many years ago, Lord God, giving him life, making him a soul that liveth within the earth, oh God. God. We thank you for the opportunity to have this breath in the land of the living, Lord God. We come this morning claiming and declaring victory, Lord God, for our dear brother 
RJ, Lord God. Yes. Strengthen him in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Encourage his spirit yes. to go forth in the community gifting that he has been doing for many years, Lord oh, God. Yes. Laboring in the battlefield, oh God. We call out your name of the name of Jesus Christ, Lord God. Asking you to protect those saints, Lord God, that have been working, Lord God. Laboring to bring you glory yes. and bring you yes. honor. Yes. We thank you for your angels that you sent concerning us so that our feet do not slip against a stone, oh God. Yes. Thank you for our opportunity this morning to share with listeners, Lord yes, God, that God. they yes, may God. have some sense of hope, Lord God, yes. to continue to run this race to victory, on, oh God. God. On, we God. thank you in the name of Jesus, we pray. Hallelujah and thank you, Lord. Thank Amen. you, Amen. I'm thank satisfied you. with Jesus. I'm satisfied with Jesus. Satisfied with Jesus in my heart. I'm satisfied with Jesus. I'm satisfied with Jesus. Satisfied with Jesus in my heart. Amen. Welcome again to It's All About You Family Radio Show. It's time to get up in the morning. Amen. I have my dear sister, Sir Regina. Amen. From Tennessee on the line. A morning again. Thank you for that wonderful prayer. Amen. Amen, my dear sister. Amen. We thank God for life itself. We thank God for what he's doing. We thank God for just being God all by himself. And every week we always have a focus. And our focus this week is self-determination. Amen. Self-determination. Isn't that something? Amen. It's one thing to be determined about something. But what about yourself? Amen. Amen. And that's just a Virginia for to come with our reflection. I just want to share a passage we shared this morning on our morning on regular radio show from 6 to 6.30 a.m. Monday through Sunday at 563-999-1460. And what we talked about this morning, practice self-reflection. Practicing self-reflection is an important tool for increasing self-determination. Self-reflection involves talking and taking the time to examine your thoughts, feelings, and behaviors in order to gain self-awareness and identify areas for improvement. How many of us need some improvement on today? Amen. By reflecting on your experiences, you can gain a better understanding of yourself and your goals. Say with me, my goals for today, right? And take more informed decisions and make more uh, informed decision about your life, right? Your life, not somebody else's life, your life. To, per, to practice self-reflection, it is important to set time aside to be with you and the Lord. you got to take the time out. I know if God gave us 24 hours in a day, surely we should take some time to be with him. Amen? And so this could be a few minutes, you know, driving down the street like me in traffic this morning. Amen? Had a time to reflect myself with God and begin to ask yourself the question, especially at the end of the day, uh, Sister Regina. At the end of the day, we want to find out everything we didn't do, right? But we're going to give Hallelujah. you five quick things. What we want you to do, think about what did I do well today? What did I accomplish today, man? Not everything that went wrong, because everything that could have went wrong with me yesterday could have happened, amen? But I'm still saying to God, Lord, what did I do well today, right? What could I have done differently, right? How did I feel during that experience? experience and what did I learn? from that experience and most of all what are my goals and how can i work toward gaining them um evangelists i don't understand i want to make people understand this on morning to encourage them to understand this morning that how important it is to reflect back on what god has already done he is an awesome God. Amen? Amen. And Amen. as I reflect on these questions, try to be honest and not judgmental to yourself. Non-judgmental to yourself. Because old folks used to say like this, we are, be- we are worst critic, right? Amen? But remember that the purpose of self-reflection is not to criticize yourself. Say it with me, it's not to criticize myself. 
Amen. But to gain self-awareness and identify areas for improvement because we all need improvement. So as you get up this morning, go out your day, new understand that we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Amen. So be kind and compassionate with yourself and focus on what you can learn from your experiences. Amen. 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 Oh, ooh, that was a whirlwind. Amen. Amen. So we saying to you, please, my sister, give us our challenge for today. That was a lot I had to get out. I'm sorry about that, but I had to get that out. Amen. No, that's wonderful. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, this morning's challenge is going to be talking about hydration. Okay. Hydration is something that we need to keep the body strong, right? Mm -hmm. So my challenge this week and our challenge is going to be how much water are you drinking? Now, when we look at water in the scripture, we have to remember that our first encounter with the water ah. was in the baptismal pool. Yeah. Then we began to drink the living water to give us the strength to meet all those things that we do need to utilize in our self-reflection. Oh, wow. Sometimes we don't equate the natural body with our spiritual well-being. Okay. So we're going to take extra dietary measures this week to eat the right kinds of spiritual food, to sit at the tables where the food is being served, and also drinking lots of water so that we don't get parched out here in this land. This land can be dry sometimes, y'all. Mm. Things going on all around us. Absolutely. So and our self-reflection is going to make it a lot easier if we're prepared for those parched lands that are external and be focused in on the internal relationship that Christ Jesus has for us individually so that we're stronger, more fit, uh, more in shape for the walk with Christ that is to come. The purification, the salvation, and eternal life are hooked in to the water, the living water of Jesus Christ. Wow. So this week's challenge is to watch your dietary measures. How much water are you drinking from the well of Jesus Christ that says that, that water will never run out? Yeah. That will give you more, more energy, more insight to meet the experiences. So when you get ready to go to bed, that list certainly of things that you did well yeah. will come out a lot more in balance as being heavier than those that didn't go so well. And thanks be unto God, he gives us grace and new mercies on every day. So whatever Wonderful. happened yesterday huh. that didn't go quite right, let's try it again today. I love you all, and I'll see you soon. Yes, God bless you, my sister. Amen. And we're going to be, we're going, to be going right into a commercial break, and we're going to come back with Dr. Gibson. She's in the house from Atlanta, Georgia. We'll be right back, family. Broadcasting is going worldwide. Now you can watch Detroit's own WHPR on your TV from anywhere in the world. No matter where you are, you can stay in the know with WHPR TV and Roku. You can get your easy to install Roku box from wherever you shop for your entertainment gear. Once your Roku box is connected to your TV and internet, go to the channel store on the home menu of the Roku box. Enter WHPR TV in the search engine and add it to your channels. That's it. That's all you need to get the best in entertainment, news, and talk, no matter where you are. Roku brings all of your favorites to your TV. Netflix, Hulu Plus, Crackle, HBO Go, and now WHPR TV, Detroit Live. Justice for Mario Woodard. Truth. Facts. Evidence. Matter. 
Log into justiceformariowillis.com. Read for yourself. came off the line. Hey man, we talking about this week. We always have a, a theme and our theme this week talking about self-determination, self-reflection. We didn't get a chance to give our scripture, our scripture, Jeremiah 32, 39, 38 and 39. It says, shall that they shall be my people and I will be their God. And I will give them one heart and one way that they may fear me always for their own good and for the good of their children after them. Woo, that was really scary, amen? And the good, for the, for the good of us, right, and their children after them, amen? We're going to explore that tonight on our Bible study. That's at 7 p.m. at 563-999-1460, amen? And then we want to just say to you again this morning, we're calling you, uh, we're here live at the radio station, WHPR TV, amen, where the Spirit of the Lord is always in this place. And we're so glad that we got Dr. Gibson on the line with us from Atlanta. We're going to bring her in and join us in a few minutes. I want to, matter of fact, let's bring her in now. Hey, Dr. Gibson, how are you? Well, good morning. Good morning. Put a little teen on it. A little teen on it. Amen. Wow. Amen. God bless you on today. We're so glad. We're talking about, and this is, the, this is the perfect person to be on the line with me today. Amen. Talking about self-determination. Amen. And self, um, self um, being able to be confident about what we do. You know, and being able to know who God is, who what better person to be on the line with me than you on today? God bless you, my sister. Amen. And so as you reflect on these questions that we asked we had earlier before the last show, try to be honest. I should say before the last commercial break, try to be honest and thus judgmental to yourself. Amen. Sometimes we judge ourselves worse than other people do, right? Remember that the purpose of self-reflection is not to criticize yourself, but to gain self-awareness and identify areas for improvement. Be kind and compassionate with yourself and focus on what you can learn from your experiences. Amen. I want to make sure I reiterate that because that's in important that we do not forget about that but as we go into our show today this is the third Wednesday of a third Tuesday of the month oh my god I can't believe this 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 month is really really going amen so I'm glad to have Dr. Gibson on the line good morning again my dear sister good morning good morning I'm happy to be here yeah you have to turn your speaker down Amen. Amen. Can you hear us? Yes, I can. Okay, there we go. Amen. Stay right. Whatever you're doing, stay right there. Amen. Amen. Glad to have you back with us. And this, uh, we, it's not just morning. It's morning ting with you, right? Yes, morning ting with a little <laughs> ting on it. <laughs> Amen. Today we talk. This is our educational day. Amen. Amen. So tell us a little bit about you again. It's been a minute since we had you on the line, and we're going to go right into our topic on today. Amen. All right. Well, my name is Dr. Precious Gibson, and I am a person who believes in self determination, in education, and perseverance. Okay, and so what I like to do is I like to gather knowledge and information. I like to share that with others because okay. we know that knowledge is power. It's power. 
And in order for you to be able to exercise your rights, you have to know that they actually exist, right? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. So and that's what we're here today. We're going to discuss um, parental rights regarding standardized testing. And mm. so many parents don't understand what their rights are, so they don't have the liberty to exercise something that they don't know about. Wow. So I'm here to provide some information in regards to that. So, Dr. Gibson, before we go to that, because I know when you was on our on the show last time, I know we don't have time to recap it all. But this, just in case someone was not on the line last time, amen, because this is like part, part two. Amen, this is when you get your pen and paper out, amen, be able to write this information down. So tell us a little bit about when you was here with us before. All right. So when we were, we last talked about, um, parental rights regarding standardized education, we touched on um, what exactly standardized tests assess, right? Okay. And so many parents probably wonder, um, is it assessing my students' um, math skills? Okay. Um, what about their ELA, which is English language art skills? Are they assessing them on what they know as far as world history, American history, uh, the city's history? What, what exactly are they testing, right? And so many parents are confused as to what they're testing. And we kind of touched on um, exactly what is testing. It's actually testing your students' demographics, okay? Mm -hmm. okay. Um, it's testing the the stock that your child brings to school with them. Okay. Um, the people that they know and, and what those people have taught them, mm -hmm. what they've learned from others. That's what it's testing. Okay. And the reason why uh, we can say that it tests that instead of testing their actual actual skills regarding academics is because I could pick a place on the map by zip code uh -huh. and tell you what those scores look like without even looking at the scores. Oh wow. Without look without looking at the scores. Mm. So this is this research has been done on this that we don't have to actually look at scores. We can just look at the demographics of the student and tell you whether whether or not they're going to pass or fail, whether or not they're going to be proficient, advanced, or score below on any standardized test. Oh wow. So that means that we're not testing That's skill true. levels, right? right? If I can pick any zip code, if I can go according to demographics and tell you what the score is going to be. Oh, wow. That's scary. That's real scary. It's very scary, and parents don't understand it. They so, don't understand it. So tell us about what our rights is so we can make sure we get this information in. Okay. So as a parent, you have the right to opt your student out of standardized testing. Yes, I said it. You can actually opt out of standardized testing. Wow. Now, many of you probably don't know this. And this because this type of information is kept secret. Wow. Okay? It's kept secret. And you may say, well, why is this secret? Think about it. Think about how polarized testing is today versus 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. Everything they want you to think rise on standardized testing. They want you to think that all the funding is attached to what? Standardized, standardized testing. testing. Mm -hmm. And it's not. Oh, wow. That's the thing. It is not, but they would not tell you that. Wow. So as a parent, in mm -hmm. order for you to exercise and understand your power, you have to understand how the policies work from the federal level to the state level and then down to the district. Wow. Okay. The federal government gave the states the liberty to decide how they were going to distribute funding, mm. which means that they can say, we're not going to use state standardized tests. We're going to use local tests. They have the ability to do that. Okay. Now, do they share that information with the public? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. But what happens Ooh. when a school falls below the threshold? So the government wants 95% of students tested in each school. Okay. And the rhetoric that parents will hear is we got to make sure we get the students in so they can test, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. Because they want to meet that 95% threshold. Well, what happens to the schools that don't meet the 95% threshold? Do they just lose all funding and cease to exist? No. Guess what? It has never happened. There are whole schools and whole districts that don't test. Really? Yes. And let me just pause in, in between here, Dr. Gibson, because we not, you're not talking about something you think, something you got on Google. 
Amen. Oh, absolutely not. So, tell us a little bit about your role. Okay. So currently my role is for instructional coach at a turnaround school. Mm-hmm. And so um, I work with schools who traditionally underperform. Okay. And so that means traditionally underperform, which means they have a history of underperforming. Okay. So this is not a one-off. This is not last year they performed, you know, underperformed, and the year before that they did fairly well. No, this is a, these are schools that traditionally underperform year after year after year. Okay. And so they become organized as what we call turnaround schools. And turnaround schools receive additional funding. So with additional uh, funding, part, you get people like me. You get, you said what? We hear about the turnaround schools. We hear about that term. <laughs> <laughs> turnaround school, yes, yes. Okay, okay. I just had to put that in. Yeah. There. So turnaround schools. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So turnaround schools is is a label that they give them because they're going to get them additional funding to do what? Turn oh. the school around <laughs> to go from underperforming. My God. To to, to to high performing. Okay. That is the goal. Okay. That is the goal for a turnaround school. But we know that traditionally schools that underperform have been underfunded. Gotcha. For for many years. Okay. Okay. And so what they do is they go from being underfunded to being funded at the levels needed for high performance. Gotcha. Okay. And gotcha. so you get additional staff members, like you get um, turnaround coaches, you get turnaround uh, EIP, which is for early intervention programs, so that those students who are in the lower grades, like first grade, second grade, who cannot read okay. on grade level, they get additional assistance and additional support. Wow. So that... Yeah, so that they can so they can restart to, you know, perform at grade level so that you don't get a student in ninth grade who can't read and who can't write, which is what we do have now. Okay, so just before we go into the segment break, because I'm like at awe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to find words. I ain't got no word, but <laughs> trying to figure out what, you know. I've heard I people know. say, what? What do you mean, right? And so we right. want parents to know. When we say to you, get your get your pen, your paper, or your iPad, whatever you use, to get information because we want to make sure that you be able to write down exactly what needs to happen. And also, you got a link you want to you want to be able to sh um, to share, Dr. Gibson, so people can get more information after we come after we come back from this commercial break. We'll be right back, family. Amen. Geraldine Bledsoe Ford and I want to celebrate three Hall of Fame women. My aunt, Anita Ford Allen, the first female president of the DC School Board. My grandmother, Geraldine Bledsoe, a member of the Michigan Women's Hall of Fame for fair employment practices in the state of Michigan. And my mother, Geraldine Bledsoe Ford, the third female jurist in the state of Michigan. Each of these women influenced me and many others to be strong, courageous, and self-assured. Feel good about your future with tuition-free programs at Wayne County Community College District. Whether you want to be in healthcare, computer science, the culinary arts, digital media, or robotics and automation for the next generation of vehicles, WCCCD has you covered. A full range of programs to achieve your goals, fit your schedule, and give you all the support you need to be successful. All of it tuition-free. Now there's something to feel good about. Register today at wcccd.edu.
Good morning. Welcome back to the It's All About You radio show, morning show. Amen. And so we're so glad to have Dr. Um, Precious Gibson from Georgia on the line with us today. I just want to say to you that you have tuned in to um, the best radio show and radio station in the city of Detroit. Amen. Amen. WHPR TV. We're so glad to have you with us this morning. God is good all the time. And the Dr. Gibson's on the line with us from Georgia, who's also, we forgot to mention that you are a graduate of Cass Tech High School as well as Wayne State University. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> That's where I started. It all started in Detroit, Michigan for me. Absolutely. I am a Cass technician at heart. <laughs> And no matter where I go, I represent. <laughs> go represent, girl, yes. And then it's not just morning. And then it's, I always have a part, as you reality, at your reality. Yes, edu reality. Okay. Yes, edu well, reality. <laughs> it is the reality of education, the things that they don't want you to know, okay? Wow. Dr. G and Turning Point Business Solutions, LLC, out of Atlanta, Georgia. So let's continue right quick so we can get this information. From. Make sure you, if you just tune in to the It's All About Your Family radio show, make sure you get something to write with or to take notes with. Uh, okay, go, go ahead, Dr. Gibson. Go ahead, go ahead. Okay, so let's start off with um, get your pen and paper ready. Yes. So oftentimes I always tell people make sure that you become knowledgeable. Read up on information, okay? Mm -hmm. Check behind what I, even what I'm saying, right? Mm -hmm. Don't take my word for it. I want you to become knowledgeable in your own right. Okay. So there are some resources that I do have for you, some websites that you can go to to get more information. Okay. So let's start with Metro Parent for Southeast Michigan, okay? Metro Parent for Southeast Michigan, and their website is metroparent.com. That's M-E-T-R-O-P-A-R-E-N-T.com. Okay. All right, so Metro Parent is, is an excellent resource. Um, they provide information on Michigan standardized testing, which is the M-STEP. Um, it also gives you information for opting out in Michigan. Wow. Opting, yes, I did. Opting out of, on, in Michigan. Come on now. So let me give you your next, your next resource. Okay. United Opt Out Michigan. What? Okay, United? it's exactly what yes, it's exactly what it says. United Opt Out Michigan. All right, and so United Opt Out Michigan works as an advocate. Okay, for more authentic assessments because we know that standardized testing where you're selecting the bubble A, B, C, or D isn't authentic. Okay, oh. and so Opt Out Michigan actually advocates for more authentic assessment. So they're not saying that students shouldn't be assessed. It's just what are you actually assessing and how you're assessing them, okay? Oh. That takes that should be taken into account, absolutely. So United Opt Out Michigan um, is for, for those who are in the Michigan area is locally. Mm -hmm. It's a local advocate for you. So I would say check that organization out, and they have a website, which is United Opt Out Michigan. All right? And then if we want to take it to the next level, Come we want to go the next national level. Come this, on, right? national. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when we say time out for playing checkers, we yeah, playing chess, right? Ch chess, so we yeah. want to make sure we step it up a bit, right? Step, on, what step the kids say, step it up a notch, right? <laughs> Take it to 100. Uh -huh. So we're going to move on from United Opt Out Michigan, which is more local, to United what? Opt Out National, okay? Uh -uh. Now, United <laughs> Opt Out National offers a variety of resources for parents interested in opting out, okay? okay. So this is very important. Everybody listening? Mm -hmm. Such as sample letters parents can send to their children's school principal to opt their child out. Really? Let me repeat that. Let me repeat that. United Opt Out National offers resources, a variety of resources for parents who are interested in opting out, and they also give you sample letters to use that you can send to your child's school principal. My God. Okay? And so, yes, absolutely. So this is this can be used in Michigan as well as other places nationally. Wow. Okay? And so, yes, yeah, so it's very, like I say, it's always important um, to re do your research, make sure you understand the dynamics, and don't be scared, right? Don't be scared. Okay. And I say don't be scared because the way people word things will make you think there's a there's a there's an issue with what you're doing, right. Right? right? We can word things and make them say what we want to say, but at the the bottom line is, can I opt my child out? 
Yes. It doesn't matter. All the rhetoric about what we're going to lose and what you're doing and the school won't fall below, that has nothing to do with your question. Your essential question is, <laughs> can I opt my child out? On, All the right extra, the dressings, the, you know, the, well, we, you know how we have a salad, right? We yes. add what to it? Croutons, mm-hmm. right? Fried onions, right? Oranges, cranberries. Oranges, you know, (laughs) craisins. You can add all this stuff to it. The bottom line is, can I opt my child out? Hmm. And the answer is yes. yes. Now, my thing is this. Don't ask. Tell. What I mean by that, don't ask someone, can you, can I opt my child out? You go in with the mindset that you already know you can opt your child out. How do you know? Because you are your child's representation yes yes okay you represent your child in every aspect of their life including education okay absolutely so you tell them i'm opting my child out you see how i said that Mm -hmm. i'm opting my child i'm not asking you i I already know i can't come on now i'm telling you i'm opting my child out op op out (laughs) op out National? Is that not what, who told me that? Amen. 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 Okay. So remember, and I'm going to go back over these resources. Metro Parent for Southeast Michigan has multiple resources for parents. Mm -hmm. United Opt Out Michigan has resources for parents, and they advocate for authentic assessments Mm -hmm. over the standardized testing Mm -hmm. um, that are given to our students. And then United Opt Out National where you can find additional resources in addition to sample letters. What would, what would you say, Dr. Gibson, because you've been in this school, I know you're able to serve in Michigan, Georgia, Chicago. Wisconsin. 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 That's Wisconsin the one I could remember. And I could, Illinois. Illinois. Uh-huh. I could not remember that part. And so what would you say to a parent? Now we're into April of a school year, right? And next yes. month we're going to be working on how to get them prepared for the summer. Yes. Okay. And so next month we'll have you talking about how to prepare their them educationally for the summer, right? And then we going to have Dr. Um, Kathy's going to come on the following week and talk about how to set their mindset, how to set the tone, the environment for them to be prepared, you know, because they can't they can't let they can't opt out in the summer, amen, and expect to re, re, um, to get back in um, strongly in the fall because I remember we did a show right here on WHPR some years ago when we started back for our um, Saturday radio show you spoke to us about how to get your kids prepared for the summer what are some things they should do right but as we go as a parent get to this end of the year what are some things you would say to them to well I would say um, always think ahead so uh, in education we have a thing called planning with the end in mind, right? Plan so you start with what your mind. goal is, with the re- what you want the result to be, and you plan backwards. Okay. And so because, you know, the summer is always coming, right? The next school year is always coming. Um, you want to make sure you're planning for summer programming for your child. Mm-hmm. You want to make sure you're planning for that early. You don't want to wait to June to plan for June, okay. right? So no time better than the present. If you haven't started looking for programming for your child during the summer, this is the time to start now. Mm-hmm. Start now. Now, my recommendation would be I would start as early as when they get back from um, for Christmas break. Oh, I see. Start looking so that you can so that you can start looking for different programs. Who's offering what? So that you have a pick of the programs. Gotcha. And not just in a position where you have to accept what's what's left over. Okay. Right. Okay. Because if you wait and you wait too late, most spots are taken up, right? Absolutely. Because for the you good have camps, who for the good proactive. camps, right? <laughs> for the good camp, they go from one year to another, right? If I had a good camp with my kids this year, guess what? I'm gonna sign them right back up for next year. Absolutely, but we have a lot of a lot of parents who have never sent their child yes. to a camp before. Absolutely. Right? And so that's why we want to make sure they get they get get ahead of the game. You start early. That way you can talk to other parents to see how you, their children like it. Mm-hmm. Right? You can kind of vet these programs to make sure they fit into you fit with your family mm-hmm. um, structure, mm-hmm. with fit with your with your with your family wants their children to learn, mm-hmm. right? Because all programs are not created equal. Gotcha. 
And you know, so you want to vet them early so that you have a pick of programs. You don't want to just have to accept something and then turns out it's something that didn't didn't fit what your family needed, right? You want to make sure you get what your family needs and what your children need because different kids need different things. Because if you so don't, you may it may be in a position where one child needs to be in one program and then another child needs to be in a whole different program because based on their needs. Gotcha. Because see, that's how they okay. wind up at Big Mama House in the summertime. And playing with Ray Ray now with no rocks, you know what I'm saying? Because they don't have we don't do, we don't do the proper planning. So on, I'm glad you mentioned that too, because by the second Tuesday being our community day next month, we're gonna have someone here from the city of Detroit that's gonna give us the options about how our kids can get signed up for summer jobs and things like that. There's things that we can do, and I like that you said planning with a goal the end in with, mind. The, with the end yeah, in mind. With the end in mind. Planning yep, with so the you're planning end from the goal. in the uh -huh. mind. Planning with the That's end right. in mind. Amen. Yes, right. I mean, if we do the planning, not just in that, Dr. Dr. Gibson, we do that as it relates to our life, period. Amen. With Absolutely. that self determination. And, and I've watched you go through school and school and mm -hmm. school and schools and schools. Amen. Amen. To Amen. get to where you are. Amen. And I've watched the self determination even with you. Amen. And and how are you able to share with parents? And that's your goal. That's your that's your mission in life. We all got our mission. Your mission, I'm gonna give you your mission. Like you don't know your own mission, right? But <laughs> <laughs> thank you for you, you absolutely you, you yeah. know what you're absolutely right. Um I'm, like I said, I'm a big advocate for self determination mm -hmm. and by definition, self determination is only the process by which a person controls their own life. Absolutely. So that's something Absolutely. to ponder, something to think about. Yeah, what absolutely. have you done to control your own life? Yes. What have you done to set your child up to mm -hmm. be able to be in control of their own life so things are not happening to them? Right. Right? Right. And so in, in order they to are do... deciding and making decisions for themselves <laughs> so that it so that they're be, and that's where the planning with the end in mind comes in comes in. Gotcha. You want to make sure that you are setting your child up for success. Mm. Mm. Because if you don't set them up for success, then then what are you doing? We want them to be successful. <laughs> that ain't exactly. happening. How the kids but if you're not doing it, then what are that, you doing? That, that's right. That ain't going to go. But before we go out for our last segment break, and I hope you can hang around with us, uh, Dr. Gibson, for a few more minutes because it's so about, I mean, that planning, planning, that's the key. That's a key of everything that we do in life. Amen. You it's like I got a plan. We had a plan to be here this morning. Amen. 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 We got the plan to get to where we need to be. God has a plan for our life. God has a plan for your life, my brother and my sister. Amen. And we're gonna give you some more tips. Amen. When we come back from our commercial break, we'll be right back, family. Broadcasting is going worldwide. Now you can watch Detroit's own WHPR on your TV from anywhere in the world. No matter where you are, you can stay in the know with WHPR TV and Roku. You can get your easy to install Roku box from wherever you shop for your entertainment gear. Once your Roku box is connected to your TV and internet, go to the channel store on the home menu of the Roku box. Enter WHPR TV in the search engine and add it to your channels. That's it. That's all you need to get the best in entertainment, news, and talk, no matter where you are. Roku brings all of your favorites to your TV. Netflix, Hulu Plus, Crackle, HBO Go, and now WHPR TV, Detroit Live. Have you ever wanted your own TV show? Have you dreamed of showcasing your talent for the world to see? Well, now you can. Have your own TV show. You can have your own 30-minute show. 
Not only will you be seen in the Detroit area, but you can be viewed worldwide. For more information, call 313-868-6612. Visit our studios and receive a free TV interview to promote your business, church, or organization by appointment only. morning welcome back again to the it's all about you family morning show amen that dr gibson tim she's something else amen she don't mind telling the truth amen and she a native detroiter and we've watched her grow we watched her self-determination you know we watched her um that self-reflection amen and she gave us some wonderful tools for our for our families to be able to use and we hope you take advantage of that we again welcome to the it's all about you family radio show my name is pastor claire Mitchell, where I'm the proud pastor of the True Business Community Church of Michigan, located at 14105 Kirchival at the corner of Eastline, where we believe where the characteristic of the Lord resides. And I just want to just say to you, you often hear me say this, but I mean it from the bottom of my heart. Get your show, get your event, you have an idea, you have a self-determination this week, or this month, or this year, that you want to make sure you have your own show, right? Your half hour one hour show there's no better place to do it than here there be hbr tv i'm telling you this is the place to be if you want to find more information how to get your show started not last not um next year but this year 2024 be self-determined that i'm going to make this happen in 2024 and on the uh, only way for you to be able to do that you got to give us a call 313 six i'm sorry 313 313-868-6610 Three one three eight six eight six six one zero. I promise you, two zero. Amen. Six six one two. Six six one two. I'm giving out the wrong number. I'm giving out somebody else's number. Here we go. Three one three eight six eight six six one two. Get that for me. Three one three eight six eight six six one two. Remember, this is the place to be. And we want to encourage you again today and thank um, Dr. Um, Gibson from sharing with us from Atlanta. And she wanted to inform our families. And one of the things she done, she she encouraged us to plant ahead. And to our parents, it's getting hot outside, amen? As things are coming up, kids are getting out of school, it's getting near that time, it's getting near prom time, it's getting a time for them to be selecting their colleges and things. We want to keep you informed here on the radio show. So next month, we're going to have a full month of preparing your family for the summer. So make sure every Tuesday, well, come on, every Tuesday morning, amen? But surely the month of May, we want to help you prepare your family for the summer, amen? And even like Dr. Gibson said, we should start back in December. So next, so December, we'll help you prepare um, to prepare for the summer of 2025. But right now, we're going to catch up, and we're going to have the information. We're going to have a representative here from the city of Detroit tell us about the summer jobs and the programs that's available. There are a lot of summer camps out this summer that we want to make sure that you involve your children in. Uh, I don't mind. It's a devil's workshop. Amen? So we need to be determined that this summer... Amen. That we're going to take some time to self-reflect, even with our family. That's something you can do at home that costs nothing. We did at one time in our workshop um, with, with um, Sister Maxine and some of the other um, kids crafts, Cheryl Robinson. We did a box, and it, and it was what well, people know as a suggestion box. But the suggestion box was not out in the community. It was in the house. So when you have information that you want to say or share with your family, sometimes it's a discussion that needs to happen. Sometimes as parents, right, we say what we need to say is what we said. You do what I said, and that's it. But sometimes you got some children, amen, even like my daughter that wanted to, Monique wanted to know information, amen. She she wouldn't go back and forth with me because we didn't we didn't we don't do that, amen. But what she would do, she would ask me like, my I don't understand why I couldn't go. So what we do, we had a suggestion. So put down whatever your discussion is with your child, and then let them put stuff in throughout the week because we work. 
working at home, some working at home, some in the street. We got things going on. We go in school. We don't get a chance to talk to them as much as we used to, right? But that self-reflection time is an opportunity to do that. P put that box together. Get an old box decorated. You know, it don't have to even be a box. It could be a basket, a bag, whatever you have at home. But if they have questions throughout the week, let them put it in there. Then sit down some time for your family to be able to talk about what's in the box. And, 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 and in a place that's non-judgmental, amen? Amen, a place that they can be able to share because what social media does, if we don't take the time with our kids, they will take the time for, for us, amen? And if they don't get the answer they need from us, they will get it from somewhere. And we want them to make sure it comes from us in a safe place, in a loving place, amen? So take that time to have self-reflection at home so that your family will be able to Ask, you'll be able to answer a question that answer the question they might have and you might need to find out what's going on with them as well take the time to do that because guess what if we don't spend time with our kids social media and other people will amen so we encourage you today to be encouraged and make sure you take the time to do that so that your kids will be well-rounded amen that they'll be able to be productive they'll be able to know what to do they'll be able to do what's necessary to be productive in this life amen but guess what they can't do that without our help so we encourage you my brother and my sister on today if you didn't get nothing else out of the things we talked about we want to make sure you take the time to be self-determined because you can do anything that you put your mind to do you can do it why i can say it for myself i this is not i tell tim this is not where i want to be amen amen but i i, I trust god enough there are some things i want to fix i don't want to be in front of the camera amen but guess what i trust god enough that i won't take a chance and not do what God says do. Amen? Worrying about what something that somebody else would think. Amen? Be willing to do what's necessary to get the things done that God has for you to do because it's your self-determination that we're talking about today. Not somebody else, but your own. Amen? And it starts with you. So we encourage you on today and then we got a lot of things coming up. We got our concert coming up. It's called um a choir from the neighborhood. It's going to be sponsored on May the 4th um, at 2 Timothy Missionary Baptist Church, 4903 East Maxwell, on the corner of uh, Warren and Maxwell. Amen. When Pastor Gerard Brooks is the host pastor there. Amen. And also we have Darius Darry. Um, which is my godson who will be here, who is a native of Detroit also. We will be honoring our very own brother, amen, and we having some self-reflection with him, amen. Our very own elder, Ernest Delaney Stokes. Y'all know Delaney. Delaney Stokes have been around choirs, um, musicians, churches all over the city. Been a blessing to many, many families, and we're going to honor him that day at 7, 5 p.m. at um, Second Timothy Mission and Baptist Church during our concert in the neighborhood concert. Amen. May 4th, 5 o'clock, Second Timothy 4903 East Maxwell. We invite you to share with us then. Amen. We got so much going on at um, True Vision Community Church. We need your help. And we need your help to keep doing what God has set us out to do. And that is to be a light on this corner. Amen. We're located again at 14105 Kirchville at the corner of East Line, and we have our morning service every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. And we invite you to our prayer service at 6 a.m. to 6.30 a.m. Monday through Sunday. That's right, seven days a week. We are on the line at 6 and 6.30 in the morning and giving God praise and honor and glory because it's all due to him. And what better way to start your day to start your day in prayer? The number again is 563-999-1460. Thank you for tuning in with us today. We're going to be closing in prayer, asking you to keep our very own R.J. Watkins in your prayers on today. Amen. We all need prayer today. Amen. That we want to be, continue to be self determined. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we honor you today, God. Father, we thank you for this time together, oh God. Father, I thank you for Brother Tim, oh God, in the name of Jesus, God. Bless him, keep him, and lead him and to guide him the, that only you can. Special prayers for our very own R.J. Watkins on today. We pray, oh God, that you would give
give him the healing power, God, that you, you will be able to heal him, oh, God, like never before, God. Lord, recognize that he got work to do. We got shows to do, oh, God. People got uh, lies, oh, God, that need to be exposed right here, God, on this very radio show. We thank you. We lift you up, God. We give you praise, honor, and glory because it's all due to you because we realize it's not really about us, but, Lord, it's all about you. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, family. We'll see you next week at 8 a.m. God bless. Mm -hmm.